These are the times that John Taffer lost his mind on Bar Rescue. And this owner was so reckless that Taffer had to make a scene. In Season 4, Taffer visited Cirovello's Bar in Long Beach, California, which was owned by Danny Harris. Back in the day, the bar was his favorite hangout, so when it went on the market, he bought it. However, Danny couldn't buy the bar by himself. So he got three investors for the bar, Justin and Val Allen, as well as Marcus Rosenthal. They all put in $50,000 each, making them majority owners. As for Danny, he invested $111,000 into the bar, but only owned 40% of it. Now, the three investors only put in their money because they love Danny. They also saw the bar as an opportunity to make some income and, of course, have some fun. Little did Danny know that buying the bar meant giving his full commitment. Danny thought that owning a bar just meant handing out good food and drinks. Well, he forgot about the maintenance part of it. Soon enough, the bar was in dire need of repairs, but Danny didn't have enough money to fix it. We're struggling on money. With time, the clientele started looking for better options in the neighborhood. Because, well, who likes a shabby bar anyway? A few months in, the situation was looking very grim. At the time of filming, the bar was $375,000 in debt and was consistently losing $12,000 to $15,000 a month. And trust me, that's no joke. The bar had four months left before they would have to forcibly close down, so Danny reached out to Taffer for some help. In this episode, Taffer brought in his expert chef Brendan Collins and mixologist Lisa Marie Joyce to help rescue the bar. But before they made an appearance, Taffer's wife Nicole and her friend Ashley went undercover. They would give Taffer some much needed insight about the service. Once seated at the counter, Nicole ordered a whiskey sour and Ashley got an old fashioned. When they received their drinks, both drinks looked disgusting. And when the ladies made the other bartender remake their drinks, whatever they were served was still awful. One bartender made a drink, literally five minutes later, another bartender remade the drinks and they looked completely different. Nicole also ordered everything from the menu to find out how good the food was. However, the meals they received were as terrible as the drinks. Each and every dish was so full of grease that it made the entire dish slimy. At this point, Taffer had seen enough and decided to confront the owner. Upon meeting him, Taffer believed that Danny was inconsistent. When Taffer showed the pasta dish to Danny, the owner was well aware of the issues, which made Taffer furious. And why wouldn't he be? And say to yourself, this isn't right, and then you brought it out anyway. Danny knew exactly how the dish was cooked and still decided to serve it to the customers. How could he be this obtuse? But despite seeing Taffer's point, Danny didn't seem to care at all. It actually looked like he was smiling and passing it off as a small mistake. Taffer, however, was disappointed. He did send in his wife after all, and this is how she was being treated. It was Danny's duty to fix these problems, but he was very much a part of them. Even though Justin, Val, and Marcus owned 60% of the business, they were just remote investors. On site, it was only Danny who screwed up the business. Taffer was baffled why the investors, who owned a majority of the business, never did something about it. And when he questioned them, none of them had a word to say. You guys own 60% of this business. You control it! Already fed up with the situation, Taffer suggested that the owners consider doing a hostile takeover. But soon after, Danny laughed off the suggestion as if it were a joke. This infuriated the bar genius. When Taffer asked him what was so funny about it, Danny said something absolutely pathetic. You guys think you're acting kind of a little crazy. Taffer, however, tried to keep his cool because Danny wasn't making any sense anymore. Taffer then explained to Danny that he was only trying to get through to him since the investors couldn't. Instead of just understanding the situation, Danny was so stubborn that he shamelessly told Taffer that he was tuning him out. The famous rescuer was so pissed that he tried one last time to make Danny understand by saying, Your bar sucks and you're gonna stand there and defend it in front of him? Taffer was annoyed with the way that Danny was defending himself. The owner actually began to attack Taffer for his methods. He even told the bar genius that the tactics he was using were f up. Taffer couldn't believe how arrogant and irresponsible Danny was. He was completely repulsed with Danny's behavior. And what's more, Nicole would probably get sick because of the disgusting food she just ate. But Danny could care less. He didn't even care about the customers who might go home sick after dining at his bar. And that was unacceptable. Danny could lose all the money that he wanted, but he could put someone's life at risk. And to make sure that everyone got his point, this is what Taffer did. You get people sick, that is un acceptable. Clean up your ass. Now, Danny not only had to repair the bar, but also get new cutlery. But in this next bar, Taffer was so mad that he didn't want to spend one second more in the kitchen. 
In Season 3, Taffer visited Fairway's Golf Bar & Grill in Murfreesboro, Tennessee. Richard Jordan had bought the bar after being in the finance sector for 10 years. He had no idea how to run a bar, but the idea of owning one fascinated him. He came up with weird stuff to make it work, but sadly, none of it helped the business. When I say weird, I mean this $40,000 golf simulator. But did it help draw in more customers? Nope, it failed miserably. Now, I have no idea why he thought this was a great idea. He could have easily made better use of that money on something that could have actually helped the bar. But that wasn't the only thing. Richard also tried his hand at several other marketing strategies like bingo, but that didn't work very well. Since the business swiftly went downhill, Richard had to return to his old job just to keep things running. While he got some money, he handed the responsibility of managing the bar to Michelle. Even though he left her to look after the bar, Richard hardly allowed her to do what she needed effectively. Kevin, the cook, who was Richard's friend, neither cared about the cooking nor the cleaning. Thanks to the poor management, Richard was $150,000 in debt. When Taffer arrived, he surveyed the bar with health inspector Steve Blavat. And they noticed that the ceiling was covered in grease and leaky pipes. Expert chef Brian Duffy and mixologist Phil Wills stepped in as Taffer's spies. And they ordered everything from the menu, including seven drinks to gauge the staff and their service. While most chefs would get to work upon receiving an order, Kevin started laughing after seeing the long receipt. Meanwhile, Chef Brian and Phil were served their drinks on time, but the drink came with a special garnish of flies. There are bugs in the bar too. But that was just the beginning, since the horror show had yet to come. When Phil received his beer, it was served in a frosty mug and it was only half full. To make matters worse, when Phil tasted it, the beer had a peculiar metallic taste. Right when it hit the bottom of my stomach, I knew something was wrong. Meanwhile, an even more terrifying scene was taking place in the kitchen. Kevin was seen committing a series of health code violations, and Steve was bewildered by how Kevin lasted this long. Kevin didn't even bother washing his hands at all. He was seen working with raw pork, then switching over to beef using the same bare hands. He didn't give a damn about cross-contamination. He probably didn't even know what it meant to maintain sanitary conditions in the kitchen. To make matters worse, he used a dirty charred bowl to cover the burgers. My heart goes out to the customers who were eating there that night. They have no idea what was going on there. Despite all the shabby work, it took 29 minutes for the experts to receive their orders, and they only received a few of them. Right down to the chips and salsa to the fried mushrooms, none of it was good. The burger was so undercooked that you could actually see the blood oozing out from it. And remember how Phil was talking about the weird tasting beer? Well, he had to get it out of his system. Oh my god, he threw up! By now, Taffer and Steve had seen enough and barged into the bar before more customers got sick. Taffer first confronted Richard about the bar's terrible practices and about Phil getting sick. It was then discovered that the beer served to Phil had expired and Michelle had no idea about it. When Chef Brian pointed out that the fried mushroom had dirt on the bottom of it, Richard and Michelle were in denial about it. To prove his point, Taffer headed into the kitchen with Chef Brian and Steve for a quick inspection. Once there, the first thing Taffer did was make Kevin taste the salsa, and this is how he reacted. What do you think about that? It tastes like and it's bubbling. From a fryer that was incredibly greasy to splashes of food all over the kitchen floor, it was clear that this kitchen hadn't been cleaned for years. Taffer then found three huge containers of raw meat sitting on the counter. And when they checked what the temperature was at, this is what happened. 68.7 degrees. Throw it out! Good job, chef! When Taffer and his experts checked the walk-in fridge out, it was even more horrifying. There was mold everywhere, which isn't only hazardous to the customers, but also the people who use it as well. And Taffer only had one thing to say. Get out of here! But just then, Chef Brian spotted something. And you won't believe what it was. Forget mold, you would have never seen this in any other walk-in before. Look at this! Oh my god. You don't want to be breathing this stuff in. And after seeing this, Taffer truly lost it. Get out of here! Get the out of here! This is unbelievable! Wait, didn't the experts order fried mushrooms earlier? I really hope Kevin didn't use these. If you thought that this was Taffer's craziest outburst, then wait till you see this next one where words made no difference, so Taffer had to use his fists. In Season 3, Taffer visited Zanzibar in Denver, Colorado. Owned by Amy Benari, this bar was opened in 2009. Amy immigrated to Denver, Colorado after completing his service in the Israeli army. The bar became quite famous since it was one of the first bars in downtown Denver. Zanzibar initially made around $38,000 a month, but in 2011, after a near-fatal car accident, Amy stayed away from the bar. 
The lack of supervision enabled the staff to misbehave with the customers, which led to the eventual decline of the bar. At the time of filming, Amy returned to the bar six months prior and fired the entire old staff. He then hired new ones in hopes of bringing back the customers. But as Eleanor Roosevelt said, true hospitality consists of giving the best of yourself to your guests. And the old staff of Zanzibar failed to give this necessary hospitality, causing lasting damage. Amy lost two to $3,000 a month and was close to losing the business after six months. Amy began to run his staff with an iron fist and invested around $250,000 into the establishment. Denver, Colorado's downtown district is home to college students who often look for lively party atmospheres. The new restaurants in the neighborhood flourished since they had what the young crowd was looking for. Later on, Taffer brought in two recent college graduates, Cameo and Nick, to survey the bar. What's more, he brought in expert bartender Jenny Costa and expert chef Duffy to get some insight. When they arrived at the bar, Amy was seen yelling free beer, which is a really dumb move. Especially considering how much the bar was losing, but Amy was desperate to get customers. As Nick and Cameo sat at the bar, none of the bartenders paid attention to them. They were also pestered by a drunken customer who made Cameo incredibly uncomfortable. Instead of just making the customer leave the bar, one of the bartenders gave the customer more drinks. Anyway, the drinks that Nick and Cameo received had way too much alcohol. What's more, the food that they ordered was delivered by the kitchen staff who seemed to have no idea about health code violations. This man had the same gloves, touch other patrons, and sneezed on it too. Ew! Seeing this, Amy stepped in and gave away free champagne shots, which cost him six entire bottles. I don't have to tell you how expensive champagne is. That's insane! Taffer then entered and found two hammered customers, which pissed him off a lot. When we're irresponsible and we hurt people, I get angry! He then walked into the kitchen and lectured them about cross-contamination and made them throw out everything. Taffer scolded the staff for allowing the customers to get so wasted that they couldn't walk or even passed out. He ordered them to wash the place out clean, which was his only condition to help the bar out. The next day, Taffer came to a cleaner bar and met with the staff, asking them about their positions. Sarah said that she was the bar manager, but not the official manager. It was clear to Taffer that Amy didn't listen to his staff. Then, a very disturbing revelation was made about Amy. Amy offered free sex to the customers. What the actual hell? And Taffer couldn't help but berate him for this. But what's even worse is that in two days time, Amy had given away almost $2,500 worth of free alcohol. After listening to this, Amy furiously started throwing plates at the wall. I really don't know how this was supposed to help anything, but whatever. Taffer then brought in his experts. Jenny helped the bartenders improve their pouring techniques by blindfolding them to get them used to pouring properly. Then, Chef Brian made Chef Dave cook the top three dishes at the bar. Before the stress test, Taffer announced that he wanted the ticket time to be 12 minutes. As the bar opened, Taffer brought in the target audience. So, how did it go? The stress test was a massive failure. The bartenders were still overpouring, were very disorganized, and also mixed up tables. On top of that, no one was getting the dirty glasses, and they soon ran out of clean ones. And guess who was the biggest disaster of them all? Amy. So this is what Taffer did next. Does everybody know what a show is? With that, Taffer shut the bar down for the night. He then told the customers to return in three days after the bar was revamped. When Taffer called out Amy and yelled shame on you at him, all the owner did was just nod with a smug smile. But that doesn't mean he wasn't pissed. Take a look at what Amy had to say. John doesn't know who he's dealing with. You think I'm gonna lay down and take it? After closing the bar, Taffer had another meeting with the staff. He told them about how disappointed he was with them, and more so with Amy. And that's when all hell broke loose. This no. is the night you this show me how you are! Absolutely not! Both men were equally fired up, and none of them were willing to back down. Amy went on and on about how he was humiliated in front of the customers. And Taffer couldn't believe that after all that, Amy was still concerned about his ego and nothing else. Taffer then asked Sarah if he was unreasonable, and Sarah, without any hesitation, responded with a big no. And seeing the plight of the staff, Taffer said, It's all about his ego, Mr. Entertainer. How about them? Taffer was infuriated with Amy's attitude, and what bothered him more is that Amy considered his staff as immature kids. Hearing this, the bar genius told Amy that he would never succeed if he didn't believe in his staff. Amy then started to rant on how to do business. But Taffer wasn't here for the lessons. While he tried his best to ignore Amy's arrogance, what Amy said next was extremely disrespectful and rude. 
When Chef Brian tried to explain the dire situation in the kitchen, Amy bluntly called him a fat boy. Amy began to body shame and everyone was shocked. Things escalated from then on into what might be one of the biggest fights in the history of Bar Rescue. There was no way Taffer would tolerate someone being so vile to an expert who just came to save his business. So these were the times that John Taffer lost his mind on Bar Rescue. Thankfully, after all the drama that unfolded at Zanzibar, it looks like Taffer's efforts actually paid off. It is one of the very few bars that's still up and running to this very day. But I'll always remember it as the most dramatic episode to have ever been aired on the show. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to drop a like and subscribe if you haven't already. Thanks for watching, guys!